I'm Mikey Carhartley. I'm a professional safari guide. I'm Tanya Carhartley, and we really look forward to taking you on safari in our African wilderness. <laughs> I was born in Kenya. Um, Mikey and I are both fourth generation Kenyans and uh, we've had an incredibly colourful upbringing and uh, I hope that uh, my children and their children will get to experience that too. I think a very defined memory as a child is the outside life that we have from riding horseback amongst um, zebra or giraffe or walking along the lakefront and picking up eggs and feathers or uh, skiing on Lake Naivasha which is amongst the hippos and a variety of you know colorful bird life and wildlife and my kids get to do all those things. I would say the word that most describes the experience of being on safari is freedom. My family moved out to Kenya in 1896. They were one of the first white settler families to arrive in Kenya. And they pioneered the trapping and translocation of wildlife throughout Africa and in the world. Um, we've been involved in wildlife for now five generations and are still trying to keep that, that history going. I'm Sala. I'm Kena. I'm Tisa. We're Tanya and Mikey's children. We do go on safari with mum and dad and we love taking guests on game drives. If you come on safari with us as a family, you're coming, you're coming into our lives. You're experiencing what is our day-to-day -day living. And we as a family have learned and loved those things. And I think a successful part of a safari is if we can give you a small window into that experience whilst you're here. And, um, and that can be with the people that we know, with the wildlife that we know, with the fauna and flora that we know, activities, and just having a sort of very free and wild life. We started out running mobile safaris in East Africa, which we still do, whereby we moved our camps every three to four days to a new location. And what seemed to be the trend was um, each of these locations that were pristine areas beforehand were, were developed into camps and lodges. So we decided to secure our own locations in order to create our own privacy and exclusive areas for our clients to experience Africa as we knew it growing up. And that was our aim, was to try and create four totally different and unique locations, different camps and different experiences to give a almost a one-stop shop. You know, you can go to all these places and have incredible wildlife, amazing vistas and views and a great um, cultural side of it in Samburu. Yeah, and coupled with that, it's a great complement and springboard for our mobile safaris. So we can continue to do the mobile camps and use our lodges together, um, each complementing one another.
try and cook from the garden. And then we have cattle and sheep and an organic vegetable garden. So as a result of that, we produce quite a lot of homegrown food. Giraffe Manor is this Nairobi city icon. You can't have an experience like it anywhere else in the world. It's also a great way to start a safari because you're immersed in wildlife in the middle of the city. You know, having the giraffes stick their heads through the window every morning at breakfast is a pretty memorable way to start a safari. Or into your bedroom for that matter. <laughs> Clients absolutely um, are blown away by it. And it's just a perfect transition into your safari, wherever, wherever you've you come, come from. from. I like going to Sulia because we go fishing on the Abadez and we go fishing up Mount Kenya and we go horseback riding and bike riding. Solio Lodge is built on Solio Game Reserve. This was Kenya's first rhino sanctuary built in 1973 and actually stocked by our family all those years ago. What is so unique about Solio is the abundance of rhino and big cats, especially, you know, the lions there. But this is the main breeding ground for rhino in Kenya and has therefore um, stocked all the other rhino sanctuaries in the country. The one thing about Solio is it's central to Kenya, it's right just below the equator. It enables us to go to Mount Kenya or to the Abadez with, within a 15 to 20 minute helicopter flight away. Mount Kenya is in itself a huge um, attraction. It's a snow-capped mountain on the equator and uh, we do take people up there to fish on the mountain tarns and, um, and just the view from Solio itself of the mountain is really impressive. Sasab is a very, very dramatic lodge. It's built high above the Wasanyura River in a very rugged, almost desert-like terrain, often compared to the landscape of Arizona, with sand and big rock outcrops. Dotted in amongst this, you get a lot of acacia forest, and you get the lifeline of the north, the, the Wasanyura River, which is where all the wildlife tends to congregate in the middle of the day, especially the big herds of elephant, which is one of the main focal points of the Samburu region. It's a community-based project where uh, the, the community are benefiting from wildlife and conservation basically through education and a variety of complementary aspects of tourism and we of course get a prime location situated above the Awasa Nyeru River and we built a, a sort of Moroccan styled mix of lodge and camp it's concrete ground but canvas walls 
and it does really complement the environment it's in. Salah's camp was our first property that we developed. It took us four years to find the location. We were looking for the ultimate location in the Maasai Mara. It's right on the Sand River, um, on the Tanzania border. And we chose this location because of privacy. It's totally tucked away. And also it is the main focus of where the wildebeest migration enter into Kenya. Um, in the height of the season in early June to middle of July and they're there in amongst that area until the end of September, October. So we have wonderful sightings, we have privacy and we have the amazing Sand River which enables us to have all the big cats surrounding us throughout the year. And we started it when Sala was about six weeks old. Hence, Sala being our eldest daughter, we named it Sala's Camp. For a first time person coming on safari, there is nowhere better in Africa than Kenya. It has the most amazing topography and terrain. Coupled with that, you have huge abundance of big cats and big open spaces for the plains game in which there are huge numbers. What often happens is clients want to come back on safari to different parts of Africa and that's why we take people to different locations. run mobile safaris because that is the ultimate way of being on safari, being under canvas where there is no structure or no fences around you. No, you can, no accustomed campsite, nothing that's permanent. It enables us to take the camp to locations where the wildlife is, where you know it's off the beaten track and enables us to have that old style safari feel. You, you, it's kind of like going back in time, but you have the luxuries and comforts of a modern day camp. Flush toilets, hot showers, good cuisine, and of course the romance of sitting outside at night with the fire and the stars and somehow being in the middle of nowhere with uh, the circle of life absolutely at your fingertips means that you have an element of freedom that you very rarely experience anywhere else.